Hey guys, what's up? I'm Christian Taylor, and today I'm gonna talk about the iPhone 8 and if you should still buy it in 2019. Now the iPhone 8 holds a special place in my heart. I used to say that the iPhone 6S was the best iPhone Apple ever built. It was just so solid, great build quality, the last iPhone to have a headphone jack. And look, I know the death of the headphone jack is so sad, but we have to accept the fact that it's gone and look forward. And there's just something about the iPhone 8 that I really love. Maybe it's because it was one of the first iPhones to have a glass back, or maybe it's because the blush gold color Apple used on it was just so good looking. But whatever it is, there's something about the iPhone 8 Plus that I like. But putting my feelings about the phone aside, Let's get real here, should you buy it in 2019? Well, when buying any phone, we have to analyze the software, the hardware, and the speed or the relevance of the hardware to make a decision on if it's best for you to purchase right now. So the iPhone 8 is currently retailing at 599 with the 8 Plus retailing at 699. And for this video, I have access to the iPhone 8 Plus, but we're gonna be treating both as basically even. Uh, it's just personal preference on which size you'd rather buy. So let's start with speed. The A11 Bionic processor is still lightning fast and probably faster than some brand new Android phones on the market. It runs iOS 12 like an absolute beast and I don't think you're gonna have any problems speed wise with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus for the next two to three years. Now talking about the hardware, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have a lot to offer. They offer wireless charging, they have pretty decent battery life. The 8 Plus has that dual camera system that was introduced with the 7 Plus and that is still being used on the iPhone XS and XS Max. And the 8 Plus is just such a perfect form factor. It's like the most comfortable iPhone size-wise, very easy to type on, nice large 5.5 inch display to consume content. It's just a good size. So I have no problem saying that the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are going to remain relevant for the next two to three years. And really the only downside of purchasing these phones is going to be the form factor. Let's face it, these all screen phones with the notch design are the future and we're not going back to the age of having the thick chin and thick bottom bezel with the home button. That iPhone as we know it is dead. So while you're absolutely not going to have any problems with the speed of this phone and the size and the usability, the camera's awesome and wireless charging is also a must have, you're gonna be stuck in the past as far as design goes. The home button is dead. It's never coming back. And while I think Apple may possibly reintroduce Touch ID in later phones, Face ID is definitely the future. But speaking of Touch ID, it is fast, it's reliable, and I don't necessarily have a problem with the 8 and 8 Plus not having Face ID. It's more of a personal preference thing. I tend to prefer Face ID, but Touch ID is awesome in itself, and I wouldn't have a problem necessarily using Touch ID exclusively instead of Face ID. Perhaps the three downsides I can find to this phone are no OLED display, no gesture navigation, and no taller aspect ratio to easily enjoy two by one video content. Now more and more YouTubers are converting their content to two by one, including me, <laughs> because it just looks so much better on the modern 18 by nine Android phones and 19 and a half by nine iPhones. It uses more of the screen real estate, but on the 16 by nine display of the eight and the eight plus, it looks a little clunky, but by far my biggest annoyance is that you're missing out on the gesture navigation. There's just no intuitive way to switch between apps on this style of iPhone with the home button. Yes, you can use 3D touch to press down hard and try to switch between apps, but that only switches between your most recent app and your last used app. It doesn't just swipe through like the iPhone 10, 10 XR, and 10S do. And in addition, it is very uncomfortable to hard press and do that gesture to begin with. And if you have a glass screen protector, it's just not fun. Gosh, get it off. So at the end of the day, if you're on a budget and you wanna pick up a new iPhone, should you upgrade to the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus in 2019? 
I gotta say, absolutely. This phone is still perfectly relevant and able to run iOS for years to come. It's fast, it has phenomenal hardware, and it's just Apple's tried and true design that many iPhone users have come to know and love. If you're a huge tech enthusiast, maybe try and save up for the iPhone XR or the XS, because then you'll have the modern design with the gesture navigation. But if all you want is a fast, solid, reliable, and good iPhone, the 8 and 8 Plus still have a lot of great things to offer. So what do you guys think? Would you buy the 8 or 8 Plus in 2019? Or would you hold out for the new iPhones Apple's going to come out with? Definitely do be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I will catch you guys next time.